The Cincinnati Reds were one of the most disappointing teams in MLB last season, but they will bounce back and make the playoffs in 2025. I think it's safe to say that our luck has officially turned around, guys. We are back, baby. We are back. Yeah. Classic. We are back. That's we right. are back. You asked for it and we delivered. It's Fan Friday and you, the fans, chose today's topic point of view. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know which underachieving team you think would be better in 2025. The Rangers and Giants are both good candidates, but I think the Reds have the best chance to go from below 500 to the postseason. Truthfully, they had the roster to do so last season, or at least most thought they did. They'd been rebuilding the roster for years and it appeared that they entered 2024 with all the tools to take over the NL Central after nearly making the playoffs the year before. Ellie De La Cruz became a bona fide star, the pitching staff was loaded with young talent, and the rest of the lineup had plenty of promise that if just a few guys took the next step, they'd be up there with the best of the best. But baseball is incredibly unpredictable and last season certainly didn't work out the way the Reds faithful had hoped. Their bats ranked to the bottom third of the league in strikeouts, batting average, and OPS when they expected to have a well above average lineup. And though the pitching was overall a bright spot, they still ranked 18th in ERA and 16th in strikeouts. The team ended up 15 and 28 in one run games and couldn't get out of their own way on defense or the base pass. They were picked off the second most times in the league and had the fifth worst fielding percentage. All in all, it was a disaster when it came to attention to the fine details that every MLB team needs and it resulted in another wasted season and the firing of manager David Bell. But that's where the optimism comes in for next season. Cincinnati hired three-time manager of the year and two-time World Series champion Terry Francona to take over the reins in what I think is a home run hire considering the state of the franchise. He has a proven track record with a career 53.8 winning percentage over 23 years and can get the most out of a young ball club like the Reds. And he got the fans fired up in his introductory press conference with this response when asked how he plans to establish his core principles on the team. I think players like being coached. I think they enjoy working hard, but you got to be organized and, and we will be and we'll get after it. But, but you know, it, people talk about having fun. I think what I think is in being in, enjoyable is playing the game right. And, and to be honest, trying to kick somebody's ass. That's what I think is enjoyable. Talk your stuff, Tito. That's how you get through to a young team looking to level up. And while that's easier said than done, there's a lot of good reasons to believe they will. But before we get into that, here are the results of this week's poll question. Thanks to everyone who voted. Look out for another question on Monday. So the Reds' hope starts with Ailey De La Cruz, who struck out 218 times last season, which is the fourth most all-time. And though he struggled on defense, you can still see all the raw talent that just needs to be refined. He led the league in stolen bases with 67 and flashed plenty of leather at short. He's going to be a superstar in due time. And the rest of the club is filled with talent that just needs a little guidance. Hunter Green should be a legit Cy Young contender next year, Rhett Lauder posted a 1-1-7 ERA in his first hit in the major leagues, and Spencer Steer and Matt McLean have a lot of potential as well. Then there are promising prospects who could contribute in the near future like Chase Burns, who is the 21st ranked prospect in the majors, and Edwin Arroyo, who ranks 65th. Needless to say, the Reds are clearly trending upward and already have everything they need to compete. But if they want to do even more to improve the roster, which they should, they need to make a free agent splash like they did with Jammer Candelario last offseason. Obviously, the Reds are still a small market team and likely won't fork up the big bucks for guys like Pete Alonso or Anthony Santander, but there are plenty of other options that can boost the lineup like Tyler O'Neill and Jack Peterson. But even without a big offseason splash, the Reds are building the team the way small markets should, and though overcoming organizations like the Dodgers and the Phillies will be difficult given the payroll, all you can do is put your club in the best position possible to compete, and that's what I believe the Reds have done. So among the teams that disappointed last season, I think the Reds have the best chance to turn into a contender and the Cincy fans will have a playoff baseball team for only the second time in the last decade. And there's another pro team in Cincinnati that should change the man in charge to get back on track. For more on how the Bengals need to fire Zach Taylor, check out this past episode of Point of View. Enjoy the weekend. We hope to see you again next week.